Perfect. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Yuri. I work for Elastic. Um, I do maps. So is everyone else here. I know. Um, all right. Today I'm going to have a little presentation about how to get from raw data to the vector tiles. We all know what vector tiles are. I'll try to go briefly into them, just so, but not enough to bore you. Um, so to the vector tiles and beyond. The what and why. You need to show a map. It has to be zoomable. It has to be really fast, responsive, have enough data uh, to go into details, but not enough data to make your computer extremely slow uh, when you're kind of getting the overview. So the tiles. The main goal is to basically transform the raw data, usually OpenStreetMap. We don't have anything better, really. As, as far as open and good quality and everything else and commu community governed and many things like that. Um, the problem is that vector tiles are not really standardized. I mean, we all kind of agree that MVT is the way to go, but what's inside the tile, we haven't really agreed. So, and performance is also kind of important. You know, you want to generate those tiles really fast, otherwise, well, uh, your boss or your bank account kind of comes knocking on your door saying, like, how come you spent three years worth of Amazon or cloud, Google Cloud instances? We all have that experience, right? Yeah? No? Yeah? Oh, okay. So, some of us did. I didn't. I'm very frugal. Yes. Anyway, the choices. There's open map tiles. We just had an awesome presentation by Tom right there in this room about open map tiles. Wonderful project. I've participated in that since a very, very strong start. I was there even before it started, kind of hovering there in the clouds, looking. Um, there's also shortbread, which is a newcomer, uh, very, very rudimentary. There is a protomap specification, also fairly rudimentary, but does a lot of wonderful things. Like, uh, we have the author right there. <laughs> um, there's bare maps, there's many other uh, up and coming. So or it's so easy you can do it yourself, really, uh, until you realize, realize there's some corner cases and more corner cases and more specifics for, for that specific region because in the OSM, they decided to map differently in Lithuania compared to all the other countries. And, I mean, we all know how that progresses. So there is always, you always have a lot of expertise on how to do lo locale mapping and then you need to put it all into your vector tile generation to normalize it. Open map tiles, there's pros, there's cons, as any other project knows. So it's a very mature project. It has been around for, what, seven years now? Yeah, six, seven, something like that. Um, has a huge community adoption, huge customer adoption. There's a lot of paying customers to map tiler who, and a few other projects, like Stradiamap, for example, uses the same schema, and quite a few, I don't recall right now which, what their names are. So it's pretty popular. There are some cons. There's no community governance. It is, I'll get to what you mentioned last, in a few minutes. Um, there's no community governance. It's limited to just a base map, the one style, like it has to be, one solution fits all and it never does. So we need to go beyond that. It has to be, it, be, it needs to become like a la carte, where it's a catalog where you pick and choose what you actually want. Um, and it's CC by attribu with attribution, so that also causes caused some, some friction. Yet, thanks to Tom and Peter and many other wonderful folks at MapTiler, they just announced about 10 minutes ago that they are considering to change the schema to CC0. Yay! I'm very excited about that one. Uh, it, it should become a catalog of layers where you, everyone can say, I want really, really detailed points of interest because my barber shop is critical on that map. I just like, I, yeah. Um, I gotta have my barber shop. There's open governance where people will be able to actually decide as a community, this is how we want to progress. This is the tooling we need. This is the schema changes we allow or don't allow. This is the flexibility we want to provide to the users or we don't want to provide to the users. So. Um, there's all these wonderful things that MapTiler is putting on the table, and I'm extremely excited about that. Uh, and there's, uh, there's some work, 
hopefully will happen in that direction. There is others, I mean, uh, shortbread proto maps, others. They're fully open source, CC0 licensed from the beginning. Very, uh, like, that kind of gives you a very solid, good base to go forward. They have very good ties with OSM community in terms of, um, they, mo most of the people who created it were coming directly from the depth of OSM community, and great people who, with a very good understanding of how the process works. And they have very clean separation of specification. This is the, the schema, what schema contains, and how to get there. Those are, like, if you separate those and publish it, you can have multiple implementations, which is another positive thing. There's cons. There's no community governance of those either. I mean, there's, it's usually a few people or one person running the project. Wonderful person, very smart, intelligent, but, you know, you can never cover all the bases with one person or a few people. Uh, it's very severely limited in functionality. There's not that much simple because those are much less mature. And they're not widely adopted. And they uh, usually also single solution fits all approach, which means if you want, again, your favorite restaurant there or uh, patisserie, or they have amazing desserts here, um, you, you're out of luck because they decided to, the authors of the map decided to have just one type of food place and it's like some food icon, like probably a burger and not very good, especially for Italy, which has such a huge variety. So open map tiles overview. Now I'm gonna go deeper into the actual projects. How much, how we're we doing good on time, so yeah. Um, I'll speed up a little bit, not to bore you. So it's an open source platform, uh, lots of support, uh, dockerized. I mean, there's a lot of goodies there. I'm not gonna go too deeply into it, simply because there were so many other wonderful presentations about open map tiles. One of the best indicator of the success of the project are these little fork and star uh, indicators on GitHub that just shows you how wonderful those things are. They're, they're used by a lot of different customers and uh, companies, including Elastic, which I work for. Uh, it's been running for over five years. There is active community participation, constant improvement, constant iteration, lots of wonderful tooling. Uh, they can even generate everything. This is how we use it in Elastic, by the way. There's like an Elastic search right there. That map is based on open map tiles uh, to show buildings and all sorts of other things uh, to an, uh, do like in-depth analysis on the dashboard. Or this is actually something that Jorge right, right there did. He's my colleague, uh, even though he's very active in open source, open street map community as well, uh, and just geo community in general. Uh, in, um, where is that? This is the, Ooh, it's a canary, canary island, uh, volcano eruption, and lots of data points, and Elasticsearch is capable of processing all that data and visualizing it. The end of the advertising. Um, tooling. How do we get there? We go from OSM to database to, uh, to tiles, usually. So what you do is you take either Impossum, well-known tool, but kind of stabilized by now. Let's go with stabilized. It has not improved in any way in the recent five-ish, five years. It's still a great tool, but it's not moving forward uh, with the new features as much as anyone would hope. And there is OSM to PG SQL, which was practically dead for a while until some wonderful people revised it from the dead and added Lua to it and did all sorts of other wonderful things. And now it's extremely fast and does all sorts of really good conversion from the OSM data dumps into Postgres databases. We all love Lua, I do. That. And then the second step, how do you convert from the database, from Postgres for, in this case, obviously, uh, to the vector tiles? Well, SDS MVT was an, uh, like, um, really a blessing for all of us to like, instantly generate any vector tiles from any of, any of your data from Postgres. It's just been amazing. Um, there's also a new com kid on the black, I'll talk to about it, Planet Iowa later. And there is a Mapnik. Anyone use Mapnik? I am so sorry. I mean, it's a wonderful project, but yeah. That was an awesome, awesome project. Rest in peace. Um, open map tiles in depth. So there's like all these steps to get started. You just run it in, like there's a make file and it just runs everything in Dockers and it just works. It's, it's very mature plat platform. Mm, you can customize it, you can change layers, but again, those are, will be your layers, your custom layers, not the original ones. Um, 
And it's all done by Postgres now. You can just throw tons of Postgres servers at it. Postgres servers in parallel will just run as as MVT and massively, massively generate those tiles. Please watch out for your uh, Google, Azure, or other bills coming in later. Horizontal, so that, that gives you the horizontal scalability because the more servers you have, the faster you generate your tiles. Yay. We, um, in Elastic, I think I spent about three to four days with three to four really, really, really large Google Cloud machines to churn through all the data. And there's still a lot of optimizations in there to skip like oceans if like a lower zoom has the same, like if the Zoom 12 had water in it and nothing more, I just assume that everything underneath it has probably water or not important anyway. So that's, it solves quite a lot of generation time. And this is how it looks inside. So basically all of the OpenMap tiles code gets compiled in this gigantic SQL statement. When Postgres people saw it, they're like, you have how many functions in the one call? We never anticipated this use case. They, we cannot optimize it. Actually, please turn off the just-in-time uh, optimization because it actually becomes, instead of 400 milliseconds, the query becomes like six seconds. They're like, no, no, just turn it off. They, they just, they couldn't optimize it. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, the internals of it look like this. Uh, each layer is STS MVT, wonderful function, which internally converts the geometries and then just puts together all the actual attributes from the needed tables. Community, active community, as I said, lots of contributions, including from myself. Uh, and we, then we had this, this wonderful Planet Tiber thing. When it came over, we all, I, I just love this picture. Peter, don't worry, there's gonna be a redemption after, right after this. So um, the way it worked is Planet Tiber, this guy from Twitter, Michael Berry, came over and said, like, well, this is not my profession, like, this is not what I do for, for, the, for the company he works for. I just like maps. I'll just hack together a little tool to convert all of the OSM database, which is only, what, 80 gigs now, in compressed, highly compressed word above format, to tiles. And he did it. It's only two plus orders of magnitude faster compared to, pro, to Postgres approach. And yet, it's not dead, so there is a, a lot of hope because of all the changes in the, in the licensing and governance and all the other things. Open map tiles is still very relevant to all this because open map tiles defines what we need to generate. Planet Tile is just yet another wonderful tool that will make it really, really fast. Well, not will, it already is making it really, really fast. It's Basically, you generate the whole planet on a beefy machine in under one hour. In under one hour. Single machine. Laptop, three, four hours if it's beefy. That's just, as I said, two orders of magnitude faster. Uh, written in Java, I was surprised myself. Uh, Apache 2.0, there's some statistics there. Uh, schema is now defined in YAML, plus some complex stuff is defined in Java. Uh, so like complex operations, uh, like building merging, mergers. For example, if you have lots and lots of small buildings, it's kind of hard to define that as a YAML thing, but then you say, like, this is how the algorithm you use for merging small polygons into a bigger one. Um, and there's already two implementations that support shortbread and open map tiles. Uh, ProtoMath, uh, PM, PM tiles um, support is coming, so there's a lot of active work on that. Well, how does it do it? I mean, we all. Do we have techies here? Any techies? Any? No one? No one considers themselves a techie? Okay, a few, all right. So there's some technical understanding. Let's go a little bit in text. So what does it do? It takes a geometry, a lake, a street, or anything really, and it just works with what one geometry. It slices it and dices it into vector tiles. But not vector tiles, it's like vector tile s uh, slice. Like just that one geometry as, represent, as will be represented in, in the vector tiles. And then it just puts them together with a special sort key into a dump file. And because this is a very simple and independent process for each individual geometry, it can do it massively in parallel. So each geometry just gets sliced, 
dumped into a file. Each thread can dump into a separate file just to make the uh, operating system happy. And then after, after all that is done, there's like a merge sort. It just takes all these files because they're, oh, sorry, wait. It sorts each file individually. And then it merges all these files together, producing the result. And because they're all merged, it means that at the tip of each file, when it kind of scans them all in parallel, the, the, the needed tile is like right there. So it, it can just kind of concatenate all these pieces together and dump them to the output, which is extreme, again, extremely efficient process. Uh, this is slightly more in depth. Again, I don't want to go too far into the details, but basically it does the resolution of the, uh, how many people love the fact that we have nodes and ways and ways refer to node IDs and then you have to resolve from no ID to point. Uh, you, you love that. I liked you from the start, yes. Um, that was a very, very painful process. We all would love to get rid of that. And uh, we all know that it's, it was a bad technical decision. I've made my good share of bad technical decisions. I'm very proud of. Um, so this is, was one of them. And hopefully uh, there's work by Johan Atop who is trying to get rid of this. And uh, there's a lot of other suggestions that are Hopefully someday we will get rid of it. For now, we're doing like two pass resolution and it goes into workers that really slice and dice things and then it goes into chunks which get sorted and those sorted chunks get dumped into the output one hour is over. Which means you really don't need all this updating stuff unless you're OSM itself. I mean, it's a valid use case but it's just very rarely because one hour is fast enough to regenerate the planet. An hour later, you just run it again if you have enough money in your cloud account. Uh, current performance, there's some stats at the top. Um, basically, if you have a beefy machine, it's already pretty low. I think it's, uh, uh, Mike got it to even lower numbers now. Uh, it's quite impressive, as I said. Um, and Planet Iron getting involved, well, try it out, play with it. If you love Rust, talk to me. Maybe someday in the future we'll rewrite it in Rust just for the coolness factor. Um, if you love Java, please contribute already because that will give us a good blueprint of how to implement it in Rust. Um, yes, that's pretty much it. Questions? Fini.